Yo, what's up, y'all? This is E, and I'm taking the genius test. We're going to see how much I know about Dreamville and the Dreamville artists. So hopefully, I don't get fired by anybody if I don't know the right answers. Me and Cole first linked up in, uh, in college. When I first met him, it was kind of just, we, he was just hooping, so it wasn't on some music stuff. And then I found out he raps. Even back then, before he got a deal, we was like, man, you gonna get signed, and then we gonna start Dreamville, we gonna have our own Rockefeller, our own bad boy. But around 2014, we started taking it serious, and, uh, and now we're here. What is the first music video that J. Cole ever released? All right, the first video that Cole ever released was Simba. We actually shot that, Lights Please, and Lost One all together. That was just cool because that was like the beginning of like, okay, you really gonna do this rap thing. And I remember that video like it was yesterday because it was just, it was a one shot. And I'll give you a little tidbit. At the point where he's crossing the street, there's actually someone that peeks their head. Like one of the production guys was supposed to be hiding behind something, he peeks his head a little bit. And then at the end, there's always one person who turns around and looks at the camera real quick. And it's still today, it bothers me, but those are the things you gotta do when you, you know, you're doing a one shot. Ari Lennox's BMO samples Galt McDermott's 1969 track, Space, which was also flipped in which Busta Rhyme song? That's a... Woo-ha. Yeah. I was confused for a second, but I, I, I did, you know, I had to go through my head like, wait, how this all go again? And that was Omen. Omen flipped that, and then Omen lost the files because his laptop got rained on when he left it. Don't ask me why he left it outside of Boscrib, but it got rained on, so he had to remake the beat, and not many people could do what Ari did on that, which is like, it's so soulful, but it's hip-hop, and I think that's what separates her. She killed that. That's, that's an Ari Lennox classic right there. Boz shouts you out by name on which of these tracks? This is Black Home Business. It's my joint. Boz started rapping late. It was important for him to know what does he want out of this? What does he want out of himself as an artist? Whether you're an artist or an executive, whatever it is, what do you want out of this? Do you want, you just want to be safe and like be good, like be comfortable? Or is there more that you wanted? Before teaming up with Dreamville, Elite was an in-house producer at which record label? Well, for sure, Rough Riders. You said Death Row, which would have been funny to pitch Elite as a producer on Death Row. I thought that was incredible because if you know Elite, he's the furthest thing from anyone you would picture being around Rough Riders. On Down Bad, Jid references which landmark Supreme Court case? Brown versus Board of Education. There's not many people, if any, that could compete with Jid's wordplay. I remember walking in to the room and hearing that, I was like, that's a cold bar right there. Which cause single caught J. Cole's eye and ultimately convinced him to sign the LA native to Dreamville? Uh, the answer, I think, is Dream. <laughs> Again, it's the same thing I said about when I first heard Cole. Certain things just connect, you know what I mean? It's a it's a feeling that connects. It's a voice that cuts through. It's a certain energy, a certain thing that you're saying that's like, you feel that. You know, it was just a good fit. It was a great fit for us, and um, I just knew right away, personally. On Still Slumming, Loot raps over a beat from which iconic hip-hop producer? The answer to that question should be the legendary Jay Dillon. Yeah, I mean, I know that because I had to get it cleared. He has that Southern like pain, that Southern like story. That's what makes the South so special to me is they have that soul and that pain in their, in their raps. That was, that was the one for me, that was the song that that got me hooked on, on Lutz music. Which of these famous rap sidekicks does Omen not reference in the hook of his 2015 song, Big Shadows? I think it was, I think the answer is Flavor Flav. Okay, cool, that one, that was the hardest one I got so far. And I'm correct, again. What comedian appeared on interludes from Earth Gang's three EPs, Rags, Robots, and Royalty? The answer is DC Young Fly, right? Tell me I'm correct. Yes. Correct. That EP series was special. In the beginning, my favorite was Rags, but then it was Royalty. How many number one albums has Dreamville had on the Billboard 200 thus far? The answer is six. Sideline Story. Born Center, 
2014 Forest Hill Drive, for you eyes only, KOD, Revenge of the Dream is three. That's our six right there, six rings. Now we about to add to that though, because the young boys and the young lady, Ari Lennox, all coming up. So more number ones on the way. Bonus round. Name 15 people who collaborated on Revenge of the Dreamers 3 in 15 seconds. Ari Lennox, J. Cole, J.I.D., Boz, Kaz, Omen, Luke, Olu, Wild Great, Smino, Saba, Buddy, uh, T.I., Ty Dolla Sign, and the baby. I got 15? Ooh. I think, you know, I think I was pretty, pretty perfect spot on. I think nobody's gonna be mad at me. I'm for sure a Dreamville genius. Getting a number one on Revenge of the Dreamers 3 to me, it was extremely special because it was the first one outside of Cole. He's good for a number one, he's earned that, but to be able to do it as Dreamville and be able to, to have all these new artists being able to carry uh, an album to number one to me felt really special. It was uh, it was up there.